Hey, this video was not all about how to install the quick set because I have so many of those on my YouTube channel already. But I did like the fact that I put the webbing tape up in there. That did not bubble at all. In fact, there was one up here that I did not have any tape on because the paper wasn't showing and that even lifted from before. So I, had, I, I ended up cutting that out. I went the extra mile, put some more webbing tape up there on that one because that was missing and it worked out just perfect. Okay, so I put some I put some extra quick set in here and I had to wait a little bit longer. That was 45 minute mud, but because the top paper of the sheetrock was ripped off, it took longer for that to dry. I thought, what's the deal? What's going on? That's because the the backing paper got wet, saturated, and that let the actual quick set dry longer. Okay, so you gotta watch that. I'm glad I used quick set on that. If I use all purpose, general all purpose joint compound it'd take forever for that to dry and I'd have to do one coat let it dry all the way you know until the next day before I put the next coat in the next coat so now I've got I've got three at least three little coats on here maybe a little bit more in certain areas okay with the quick set and now I'm ready for the next step I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer okay before I put the lightweight all-purpose joint compound. Hey, well that lightweight, ultra lightweight worked out pretty good. And I've got one coat on here now. See, I got two to three coats of quick set on here, and then I put one coat of the lightweight joint compound. And now I'm gonna let that dry. And it's not so thick that it's not going to still dry today. Today, right now, what time is it? 4.39. And so before I go to bed, I'm coming back over here, uh, 8 o'clock, 8.30, something like that. Now I'm going to put another tight skim over here. I'm going to knock off some of these ridges on here that I have. And then I'm going to do a tight skim, what it's called, and get this all nice. And then I'll let that dry overnight. And then I'm going to come back over here. And I'm gonna sand this nice and smooth like a baby's butt. And the trick is when you sand, don't sand so much that you sand all your stuff off and you do too much. Too much sometimes is not a good thing, okay? So just be careful with that. This, like I said, was not a video on how to put all this stuff up. It's just giving you some different tips on what I do to get a good wall and you know what I'm an average Joe if I can do it you can do it hey well it's the next morning and I got here a little bit late but I'm ready to sand this wall now before I sand this wall I'm telling them we've got to turn the ceiling fan off they've got some jealousy windows here we've got to close those they're closing the doors to the bedrooms oh that's kind of cool like that Here's the bedroom door right here. I kind of like that. That's slick. Okay, and we're closing the bathroom door and the other guest door. We may even cover the couch. We're going to shut these windows here too. These are called jealousy windows. And you just take a, you just go like that and close them. Okay, because I don't want any air moving around in here. The idea is when I sand this, I'm going to try to sand it not really super hard or anything, but then that the weight of the dust I want it to fall down but if it gets up in the air if the air is moving around it's gonna fly around and everywhere in here is gonna get dusty just from doing this you wouldn't believe it until you saw it on your own that's why I'm trying to give you these tips okay so I'm gonna start getting ready to sand this wall and incidentally when I'm talking about sanding walls this is a smooth wall finish on the wall, if this was a light spray texture or something, you could take uh, a sponge and actually wipe it down without sanding it. Did you know that? You could do that and then you wouldn't have to do any sanding at all. But because it's a smooth wall and I'm gonna put two coats of, of paint over, actually they're gonna put one coat of primer over all the white area and then two coats of finish throughout this, okay? I want it to be nice and smooth. So I don't wanna just wipe it down with a sponge because I think it's gonna get better if I sand it all the way. And I'm gonna just lightly sand it and I've got my paddle sander here. I got it from Home Depot, okay? 
and I bought some sanding pads. And the thing on this, there's 25 in here. I didn't need 25, but to get, to buy like three, you could buy two packs of three or two packs of five for the same price or more than 25. So I've got plenty of sanding pads for later on and I take that, loosen this up and then it folds over like that, okay? And I'm just gonna use that, all right? Let's do it. Oh, I didn't know you were filming. No, I wasn't filming, Mark, but he had some he had some thoughts and ideas. He said, hey, should he bring a shop vac as I'm sanding and take a shop vac and kind of hold it there and try to suck it up? But I'm not quite sure because the shop vac is going to blow air out of the back side of it as well. And that might create more airflow and it might throw up and kick this dust up. And we were going to put some craft paper. This stuff here is I call craft paper, K-R-A-F-T craft paper I could have we could put that down but I didn't put that down when I when I did the the sheetrock and you know if if we put it down now after everything gets sanded then you've got to fold that up and throw it away and that is going to create a dust storm so I think we're just going to leave it just like this as I sand and everything's just going to drop down and then we'll and then we'll take the vacuum after that and wipe it down and stuff and incidentally once you do it you just have to be careful you because the more the more you brush it and stuff it's going to fly up and then when you get all done before you start painting wipe this down with a damp rag or with a sponge to get all the excess because when you get ready to prime, you don't want to prime over a dusty wall, okay? Because then, does that make sense? If, if you put primer on there, it's not going to stick as well because you're going to have a dust layer on there, okay? Remember that. Since we're talking about sanding, what kind of grit sandpaper should you use? Now, you can get this in, in packs and see this says 100. Well, they had 120, they had 180 grit. So I thought, eh, middle of the road, I'll get the 100 grit. And like I say, when you sand on it, you just want to sand it not so hard and try not to sand too much of it. It's not, you don't get it smoother by more sanding, okay? I just want it so it's smooth to the touch. And I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear my gloves here too. That way I can rub my my hand along the wall and feel where it's smooth and where it's not smooth and then just take this and brush a little bit more on there okay just be careful when you're sanding do a good job okay I'm only gonna run the camera for a little bit because I don't want it to get all dusty but when I take took my pad on here I just folded up the edges on the side because then I can have a, a, a strong surface right on the edge because if not see it was like that and I wanted to sand right to the edge I can't really put any pressure there can I so that's just gonna kind of float along there so I I kind of fold up the edge and then I'm just careful when I do it and I'm not gonna do it really super hard I'm just gonna do a little bit That one, that's it. That's all I'm doing on that little one. Now if you have, if you have a light, you can shine a light on here. I usually have my uh, construction light here, but I don't have it here today. But you can shine a little light on there and see, see where you can, where you need to sand a little bit more and where you, where you don't. See with the air, with the air not moving around, most of this dust is just dropping straight down. Now we're gonna have some in the air, but but I got Marky shining the flashlight for me over here, and that should be good and good enough with the light. Maybe I wonder. If I'll just turn this light on here too. Okay. Just easy pressure on there. 
And then when I see little lines and stuff, I can just hit it. I don't have to go hog wild and just start going all over tape. I can feel my hand on here. I feel right there. Okay, so I can do it a little bit more. And depending what what type of sandpaper you use, the more coarse sandpaper you're gonna put, you're gonna throw line, lines in your mud. Okay, but rest assured, even if you have little hair lines from your sandpaper, once you prime it, you're gonna throw material on there. Once you put your two coats of finish, you should bridge over anything. 